and didn't even benefit from what they were fighting for. So, so it's our duty today. It's, it's our honor today. It's, 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 it's what we're supposed to do. It's our duty today to come and make sure that what they fought for is still taught years and years and years and years and years after they have left. We ask that you bless everyone else in this sanctuary right now. Bless their homes right now. Bless their families right now. If they have businesses, bless their businesses right now. Whatever's connected to them right now, whatever connected to them, whatever they put their hands on, God, we ask that 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 you prosper it right now. Yes, sir. Yeah. And when when it's all said and done, when it's when it's all said and done, when when the victory is ours, because we know with you the victory is already ours. But 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 but, but when it's all said and done, we'll be quick and careful. To make sure that we tell not only not only the state of Florida, but that we tell the world that if it had not been for God, Amen. on our side, where will we be right now? We thank you that we don't look like what we've been through. In your name and in your son's name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. Come on, really, really listen up, really. Really listen, come on, moderator, soon to be state president, Carl Johnson. Amen. Let's reminisce of the civil rights movement and the black history movement that we're going to have to go back to. There was a song he sang, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Come on, y'all help me. I got a feeling. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling. Come on, everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling. Everything's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Right. This one I really like. I 
so you may be seated. Thank God for you. We're going to, and we can utilize more than one mic. We have two of them. Well, I guess we can split it up. We have a, many clergy who have joined us here today, and we have some very important people who are in the struggle. We want to give them an opportunity to tell us who they are, who they represent, and why they are here. We want to tell them, we want to give you an opportunity to tell us who you are, why you are here, and no, tell us who you are, who you represent, and why you are here. Amen. And of course, we're going to start with my South Florida pastor, Bishop Eric Jones. That's what we're going to start with. South Florida pastor. Let's give it up for Bishop Eric Jones, who is the father of State Senator Sheppard Jones. Let's give it up for him. Amen. Give God a big hand clap of praise. Yeah. Thank you for being here. I am the pastor of Cornelia Worship Center in the Village in West Park in uh, Pimple Park, Florida. I also was mayor for 16 Tell years. Tell us, well. mayor! Amen. And I was also um, president of the Florida Black Caucus for uh, about two years. So, I know the path that we're on, and uh, I know the things that we need to to get done. And even though I had a long morning, I said uh, certain things. I just feel as though it's necessary to make a sacrifice. That's for. it. And That's when it. I say that, I'm saying because because I'm aware of this system. Um, if we do not align ourselves. This system is going to be the burial ground of our heritage. Um, and we can't keep waiting for the government to do it because they have proven that they're not going to do it. Matter of fact, they're trying to dig the hole deeper. And I was in the 60s. So being I was back in the 60s with the Rap Bounds, the Stokely Carmichael's, the Angela Davis, the uh, Black Panthers, uh, it's not a matter of steering hate. It's a matter of not letting hate get on us. Yes, and so it's a matter of making sure that we preserve those things that we fought for. One thing I want to say, and I'm not going to take a bunch of time, and that is that. In the 60s, I always called it a wagon. That wagon in the 60s had things in it like discrimination, injustice, um, cruelty, inhumane treatment. And that was what they were actually fighting for. And the Malcolms and the Margarets, when they pulled that wagon to actually empty some of the stuff that was in it. Oh right now, I'm uh, sad to tell you that the same thing that they were pulling in that wagon is still in there. It's just being pulled by different mules. But ain't nothing that they were fighting for in that wagon is out. It's still in the wagon. What I'm saying to you, we can't just talk about what's wrong. We gotta take some of that stuff out of that wagon. Amen, because we can't keep fighting and spending energy on things that's not changing. And I appreciate our Jewish brothers. Yes, sir. They don't wait for government to teach their history. They teach their own history. Yes, sir. I'm listening. I'm not going to try to make the Sanctus do nothing. What we're going to strive to do, and we started in our church already, teach our own history. Amen. We teach biblical black heritage and we teach black theology and we also teach just plain black history. Our children need to know that the trail that we're traveling is filled with blood. And our people and our young people especially need to understand that we must not allow the sacrifices that they have done 
to go and be wasted. Amen. And so, yeah, and young yeah, my son, he, he's there, he's been on CNN, on MSNBC, on Channel 10, on Channel 4, and he's fighting strong. And I told him, watch yourself because that's hate is out there. Amen. And so, he's going to do what he has to do. And I advise him a lot. So I let him know how to cover his back. So, just a matter of knowing. And listen, those that it's, and I'm, I'm closing. It's amazing. We should not feel some kind of way to stand up for who we are. That's right. Amen. And that's, to me, that's bad within itself because we feel as though we have to sneak and chill to talk about our blackness. Nobody else does. And we shouldn't either. And one thing I want to say, and I'm going to close this thing. <laughs> when you talk about fighting for our freedom, I used to ask myself, why am I fighting for freedom when God already made me free? Who then holding me in bondage that I got to fight for freedom? I don't need to fight for no freedom. I'm free. It's just that those that are in power try to limit my access to my freedom. And that's what I'm fighting for, access to what I already have. You don't have my freedom. I was born free. God bless yes. Let me just say grace and peace be upon all of you who have gathered in the sacred place. I do honor my 78th brother, Pastor Richard Dunn. We say that because we graduated the same year. He graduated from the best school. I graduated from the rest school. He's no, no, no west school. All the He's no weather and I'm central. So figure <laughs> that thing out by the grace of God. And we honor all the rest of the pastor. And listen to me. I'm here because I heard the clarion call. Pastor Dunn. Uh, text me the information. I'm fully aware of the mess uh, that's going on, but I came here to be a part of the mission to add to the message that I believe what done is going to come and speak to the issue at hand. But let me tell y'all right now, Eric Jones set the stage yes, sir. as it relates to solution and our stance already. He has set the stage about being free. Jesus said it's free. The Spirit of the Lord's upon me. He has known me to preach the gospel to the poor. You know, and so on and so on. We already free. He's liberated us. And so that was profound. But he said another statement, and I was going to defer not making this publicly known, but it's going to come out anyway, is that even as we're speaking about myself and the Congresswoman is putting a plan in place, exactly what you said, and you said it thoroughly, brother. She said, Dr. Johnson, no offense, but I live by a Jewish rabbi. Every Saturday, he takes eight kids and teach them the Jewish doctrine. Why can't you and other gatekeepers of the city rally all the pastors together and teach our history yeah. on Saturdays? She said, and guess what? The curriculum is already done. It's already in the school system. But the black kids rather take robot classes than history classes. This must change. So an effort will be put in place. I'm not trying to take any thunder no, just, from the brother, but this brother said everything clearly. He spoke consecratively, but he spoke uh, uh, prophetically. No one can put us back in bondage if we're already free. So maybe this is going on, but we can have other avenues to pursue. I'm here as a, as a partner in this process. I will be going, based on an invitation from Tallahassee, from Holmes and Sharpton. I will be marching on that Wednesday. I've already been called to be there. And so but I'm here in my local city, Reverend Richard Paul Dunn called me. And I'm, I'm going to be on the battlefield with you all to help fight this so we can get our fair, proper, honorable of things that's doing to us. So I'm standing here. I'm here as a team player. Brother Eric said it right. Even though we've been detoured and diverted, we can't be denied. We will teach our kids our history, even if it's diverted from school temporarily. It can't be taken from the church. To God be the glory, I can't wait to hear from the Dunn guy who has called this meeting and the other Dunn who is over this house meeting. I love y'all in Jesus' name. Right. Where's the Yes. 
I want to say good afternoon and happy Black History Month to everybody. I'm also going to say that it's a rough afternoon for me because I am following a very learned and very wise and very well-spoken pastor, but so wish me luck, wish me luck. <laughs> My name is Stephen Hunter Johnson, and on most days I would greet you as a member of the Black Miami Day Black Affairs Advisory Board, past chair of the Miami Day Black Affairs Advisory Board, past president of the 100 Black Men in South Florida. On most days, that would be the case, and that, was, that would be how I would greet you, except I cannot greet you like that today. Because on Wednesday, at a meeting, I publicly called for a letter to be sent to our governor, Ron DeSantis, identifying explicitly what has been wrong with his actions. And you cannot identify explicitly what has been wrong with his actions without using the appropriate term. Our governor is a racist. That's right. And then Wednesday evening, I spent my time penning a three-page letter explaining why those things are true, hoping to both highlight that fact that our governor is a racist and that he is exhibiting anti-blackness in its finest form from the government, but also explaining what Frederick Douglass meant when he wrote what is to the slave the 4th of July, and what Langston Hughes meant when he said America was never America to me, because of course, the state of Florida does not find these things appropriate. But those things are appropriate for our children. Those things are appropriate for our schools because the heart of revolutionary struggle in this country, and I don't care which organization or which group you represent, that heart comes from these churches, like this one we're standing in. That heart comes from our people and our struggle. Those words of Angela Davis, if they come for me in the morning, they will come for you in the night. Yeah. Those words were not only to us as a people, but it was to all the other peoples, letting them know they're next. Mm. It doesn't stop with our history. No, sir. It doesn't stop with our thought leaders. It does not stop with our intellectuals. If the government finds our thought leaders objectionable, if they find our cry that Black Lives Matter objectionable, they will find their cries objectionable next. So I stand before you today, thankful for this opportunity and that phone call I got from Reverend Dunn on Friday when I really needed it. God always comes through. Yeah. And he said, brother, come on down. We'll stand with you. So I stand before you, Stephen Allen Johnson, unapologetically. Thank you. Yes, sir.
So I like to believe that we're going to take some housing prices out of here. We're going to take some issues out of this whack. And I'm not going to be another mule just pulling the whack. I don't want to be that. And I know it's true. What Pastor Jones has outlined is true. But I refuse to be somebody's mule. God bless you all. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Reverend Ron Johnson, the pastor of Memorial Temple Baptist Church. And it is an honor to be with all of you today and these great pastors. We give you honor as well. Amen. I must say this in the words of one of our great leaders who's not with us today, but he did say this. We shall overcome because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Dr. King said those words and penned those words to enlighten African-American history and to enlighten American history. The reason why I say that is because black history is embedded, it is in the fiber of American history. You can't look at American history and not see black history, amen? So as we come today, we petition our governor not to repeat the mistakes of the past that we saw the old governors of the South that they did, but to be morally conscious of where we can go as a human collective community going forward, reaching a greater America. We don't have to put away black history. What we need to include is everybody's history. White history, Jewish history, Asian history, Hispanic history, and of course, black history. When we learn about each other, guess what we do? We make this country better and stronger. God bless you is my prayer. Good afternoon, good, good afternoon, afternoon, good afternoon. Brother, brother. All right, now I may be the, the, the smallest of all of these great men that's coming up here, but not in size, amen. My father, father. Amen. But I just want to come and tell you today that, uh, you know, I uh, pastored True Love Praise and Worship Church for 14 years, and uh, pastored the Hack uh, Ministries, uh, Homeless Ministries for about 20 years, and uh, finally got a chance to uh, uh, work at, uh, in the school system for three years and retired. And my wife and I moved back to North Florida because even though I spent the first 25 years in Jacksonville, 35 years here, I went back home, amen. So I came back this weekend and there's some things that happened. Uh, Thursday, I, I came in and because on Friday, um, I had some uh, doctor's appointment. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, I want you to see. Uh, I had cancer last year, this month, amen. Y'all didn't hear me, I said I, can't. I had cancer last year. But God, uh, that's all I gotta say to that, but God. Uh, so I had to come to a follow-up appointment just to make sure, amen, that the doctors realized that God didn't make a mistake because it's still cancer-free, amen. amen. So when I came on Friday to do that on Saturday, I had to bury one of my members, amen, right here, amen. And so then, and then Pastor Dunn, he's my pastor. Uh, before, when I became a minister, he's the one that groomed me from here to where I am. And I thank God for him. I thank God for you, Pastor Amen. Dunn. That's good. Amen. And so, so he came and asked me to be a part of this today, and I was delighted. I'd rather after that morning service at my church, True Love Praise and Worship Church, on my regard, to head back to uh, St. Augustine, Florida, where I'm at now. Uh, but I had to be here. And let me tell you why I had to be here and tell you those other things I had to say. While we're toiling with a governor who's telling us what we can and cannot read in our schools, right? Let me tell you something, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to tell you this, some of you all may not know. There's some things going on in the school that he should be worried about, amen, and that he's not worried about. And I'm going to give you a couple of those things before I take my seat. Did you know that you can have a child to go into the black school? 
for 180 days, which is one calendar school year, and make all Fs, but the next year he's going to be in the 10th grade. Wow. He can go into the 10th grade for 180 days, one calendar year, and make all Fs again. And by the time he's uh, spent two years, have a 0.0 grade point average. But he's going to the uh, junior year, that third year. Because they're doing that because they want to make money, not make sense. Yeah, right. Amen. And so they're going in. And so this is the thing that he should be worried about. Amen. Wow. But he's not worried about that. Amen. Wow. Because they're making money off money. that. Amen. So while they're trying to divert our attention about a book, it is bigger than that. Amen. Amen. It is much bigger. And then they give you a test that's called the Florida Standard Assessment. And that Florida Standard Assessment is a tough test. Because it makes you read and do all that. I know that because I'm a 30-year math teacher, high school math teacher. Tell us, tell us. And so now when you take that test, you get six opportunities by the time you get to the 12th grade to take it and pass. If you don't, you don't graduate. But guess what? Uh -huh. After you take it six times and fail it six times, they got another test that they give them, which is a multiple choice test. And then they give them that test so that they can pass. Why? Because if they don't make 90% uh, uh, graduation rate, they get to lose their job at the top. So are they looking out for our kids? But they worried about a book. There's greater things that we need to worry about with our school system. And you know what? Certain things happen, and I'm glad that he did that, because it raises the attention of what we really need to be focused on. So now you want to talk about what's going on in the school system, we want to talk. Amen. We want to get these things taken care of so that when our kids get out, they can challenge jobs that they can get and not have to worry about getting into the uh, entry level positions. All right. And that's why I'm here. I thank God that you uh, called me here on this day. That's why I rather I could have been in Daytona Beach by now. Amen. But I'm glad that I'm right here for a good cause. God bless you. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Pastor Tim Jones, Senior Pastor of Greater Harvest, Miami. I'm also a uh, social studies teacher at Miami Central Senior High School. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I realize I'm also the site director for 5,000 Role Models there, too. And, and I realize the urgent need uh, for black young men to be able to overcome the battle with identity crisis. And I feel like uh, these clergymen gathered here today, and what Pastor Dunn has been able to do in gathering us all here is going to be the first step in responding to that and giving redress to the issue that is at hand. Uh, so we appreciate you all for coming, and uh, God bless you all. Thank you so much, Thank Pastor. Thank you so well. much. Amen. Amen. Yes. Just before, and uh, uh, Drabina, wave, raise your hand so Dr. Dunn will know and Ms. Dunn will know who you are. We got to check our, he's a historian, we got to check our genealogy because I think we might be related. Amen. Uh -huh. There's not too many Dunn's that's around here, so, and I talked to him about that, so just raise your hand again. She said, Ricky, talk to him. I think we might be related. <laughs> Amen. Let me, first of all, before I, I'm going to proceed. The, the main speaker, and that's Dr. Marvin Dunn. Let me pause right now and thank all of our white brothers and sisters who are here today standing with us. Let's give them a hand, please. Please, let's do that. Please, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. I want to look straight into the camera. I'm not looking down. I'm not scratching where I don't itch. I don't laugh when it's not funny, and I'm not shuffling my feet either. Oh, wow. We've come today to thank you, Governor Ron DeSantis, for woking us <laughs> and bringing us together as African American people, Jews, Gentiles, Muslims, Catholics, Christians, whites, blacks, Hispanics, Indians, Asians, because of your bullying, plantation, slave master mentality. I don't come to play games. We did not come, you're gonna like this 
Steve. We did not come to beg you, apologize to you, or ask for permission to teach our children. We will do from this forward, from this day forward, teach our children their rich history, whether you or anyone likes it or not. We will teach them about the struggle from slavery to freedom. John Hope Franklin. We will teach them about CRT, critical race theory. Yes, we will. We will teach them about DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. We will teach them about racism. We will teach them about Black Lives Matter. Because all lives matter in the sight of Almighty God. Secondly, Ron, God told me to tell you that you need to repent from your evil, wicked, hateful, and racist way. God told me to tell you this. Look what happened from biblical history. Look what happened to Pharaoh with the Israelites. From international history. Look what happened to Adolf Hitler with the Jews. Look what happened to Governor George Wallace of Alabama. Run! Every knee is going to bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. We're not fearing any man or anybody. We're not fearing the proud boys or all your ones. And let me tell you something else, Ron. Do like the Southern Baptist Convention did in 1995. And I am a part of both the National Baptist Convention and the Southern Baptist Convention. You know what the Southern Baptist Convention did in 1995? They apologized for their position on slavery because they realized it was wrong. Somebody say it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Ron, wrong. be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever you sow, you're going to reap. God will not allow America to have a racist president in 2024. Do we want a racist president in 2024? Do we want a racist president in 2024? Whether you black, whether you white, whether you Jew, whether you Gentile, we cannot stand for a racist president in America. And in the words, as I told, in the words of our Jewish brothers, Look at you. And sisters about the Holocaust. Yeah. And today us about racism. Somebody say, never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Let me just read this and I'm going to reiterate what you stole the thunder, brother moderator, soon to be president God's willing of our Talk Florida some. General Baptist Convention. Talk some. Talk some. I want to work with the pastors to get them to have the teachers in their congregation teach African American history on Saturdays like the rabbis do in their synagogues. And that comes from our U.S. Congresswoman Frederica Wilson. She said, we have federal dollars for those teachers in our congregations Listen. who will teach African American Listen. history uncut and unadulterated. So we're not begging nobody. We're not gonna let nobody turn us around. Somebody say, I ain't gonna let no, that's what our forebears said. I ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. I ain't gonna let, I wish we had some children in here that we, we got to do this for our children. We owe it to our children to have a better world than what we found. Just like our parents gave us a better world than what they found. So we owe it to so Governor Ron DeSantis, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. At this time, at this time, we're gonna bring on our keynote speaker, my cuz. <laughs> The, one of the most renowned historians in this state and perhaps in this country, 
he does regular trips to Rosewood, Florida. And, and let us know before you go how we can get involved in that doctor or uh, his wife or his nephew. Because we want to we want to take our kids. We need to see that. We need to have that we experience. Do. We, do really. we need that. So we have Dr. Marvin Dunn. He will come now and close us out. Let's all stand to honor our brother for love. Know the historian, author of many books, and our history, Dr. Marvin Dunn, who said, there's no way he's going to let somebody tell him what to teach. Not somebody, Richard. What a prophet you are. I need some notes. I need some notes. I need to get that right. Hello, Doc. Can you hear me? Doc. Hello, John. I'm not sure that's what we're doing. We got some more. We got some more for you. That's good, Richard. Okay, thank you. I can't do what he just did. No, <laughs> that's Richard Dunn. That's this is Dunn. Professor Dunn. It's a big difference as you will see in just a moment. I hear you. I like that. Uh, Richard told me, uh, Doctor Dunn, we're going to have some preachers present. He didn't say he was going to fill up the yard, fill up the church. He said, I'm going to have some preachers present. And we're going to get busy in attacking this problem. And you see, he was good to his word. He sure was. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Frederica Wilson called me two days ago. Frederica Wilson hasn't called me in eight years. Uh, the woman was on the phone an hour talking to me about what we're going to do to get around the Sanders. Y'all remember the civil rights movement and the role of the church? We're in the same position. We're in the same position today. We need the church to help us get around this man who's trying to kill our history. My father. Yeah. The census likes to talk about the woke mob. What about that mob in 1935 that lynched Reuben Stacey up from Lauderdale? With a deputy sheriff passing his gun around to those who didn't have a gun so they could fire blood into the body. So no one could be held accountable for killing Reuben. What about that mob, Governor? What about the mob that burned down Rosewood in 1923? The mob that burned down Okoye? I don't know how to teach history the way the government wants us to do it. Yeah, yeah. They want us to do it objectively. I can't teach about an enslaved woman having a child ripped from her breast and sold off into slavery objectively. I don't know how to teach about people being burned by the millions in ovens during the Hitler era objectively. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to teach about the dispossession of Native Americans objectively. But I'll tell you something, we can't mention the, mention the Cherokee Trail of Tears. Ah, oh, now you're getting them drop by Dr. Indoctrination. Emotions. This is not the America I spent seven years as a naval officer fighting for. DeSantis was a lawyer in the Navy, in some place stuck back in an office in Washington, D.C. I was on fighting ships protecting my country. And now this man's gonna come and tell me what I can't teach? Listen, I will not change one syllable, not one sentence, of anything I teach. <laughs> this is not about African American history. That's a ruse. This is about the White House. This is about this man trying to get the most rabid, right-wing aspects of his party behind him before Trump gets them all. So they're fighting over the garbage oh in the Republican Party. So you can wrap that up and then go into the convention to possibly get the nomination. This isn't about us, it's about power. Don't be deluded. Now, will this fly in Pennsylvania? Will it fly in Ohio, in Michigan? I don't think so. We'll find out. But this man is going to ride this horse all the way to the White House if we let him. If we let him. If we let him. If we let him. My guess is that this man has touched the nerve in America. Look, they got as many white folks in this room as black. Most people in our country, most Americans do not want to black conservative or liberal do not want the government telling professors what to teach or how to teach it. That's not American. That's how Hitler did it. That's how Stalin did it. That's how Castro did it. This is not American. And we're not going to have that in this country. Here we got a man now as governor who is chasing professors out of Florida. 
If I were a young professor, graduating, graduating with my doctorate, to decide where I want to go, where am I going to teach? If I had to make that decision today, Florida would be the last state on my list. I'll go to Ukraine first. He is chasing teachers out of the classrooms. Can you imagine, look, that, I'm not bragging. There's one book on the history of blacks in Dade County. Just one, I wrote it. Black Miami in the 20th century. That's right. 1997. The only written history of blacks in Dade County. If a Dade County teacher took that book into a classroom, Monday morning, he or she could be arrested. Third, third degree felony. That's our history. The only book we got cannot go into a Dade County classroom. So we're going to take this history outside of the classroom. We're going to do more Teach the Truth tours. We got one coming up in March. Where we're going to go to where they killed Willie James Howard. Y'all don't know about Willie James. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. Let me, just this yes. one story. Tell us. Willie James, every time I see the, every time, every time I go to this boy's grave, in live book, I come back with him in the back seat of my car. Willie James was 15 years old. Listen. In live oak, Florida. And he was smart. Uh, uh, they let him work at the drugstore downtown, delivering medicine. That was unusual for a black kid to get to do that. Willie James Howard made a mistake. He fell in love with a white girl in that store that he worked in. And he wrote her a letter. The sort of thing the 10th grade is writing. I love you, you love me, don't tell anybody to. And her daddy got it. Took two other white men, they went to this boy's house. Now this time he heard that the mom, that they were after him. He's clinging to his mama's knees and they take him at gunpoint. To where his father worked at a lumber yard, put his father in the car at gunpoint. So you got the boy and his father in the car at gunpoint. They tied the boy's hands and feet on the way to the Swan River. They get rid of James there. He gets out of the car. The man puts his gun to his head and says, jump or take what's in this barrel. So Willie James gives his father his little Bible he carried with him. His father said, I'm sure glad you went to church, son. And the boy jumped and drowned. And he was buried in 24 hours. No investigation, no grave, nothing. For five or six decades until the back of black minister up there took the responsibility to have a service for Willie James Howard. The next Teach the Truth tour is going to his grave in Live Oak. And we're going to stand there and pray. <laughs> what, what, we're, what we're trying to do with these tours, at no cost, to anybody who takes them. We take a parent and a, and a high school kid, or a parent and a grandparent on these tours at no cost to these places, so they can walk the ground, feel the spirit, connect with the ancestors, come back home and tell the stories, and pass them along under the, around the Christmas tree, around the Thanksgiving table. We're going to keep doing that. This governor will not stop our black history being taught. He will not stop it. But, with these gentlemen and others who are not here, we can stand against this tide. Yeah, we can yeah. resist this tide. Yeah, yeah. So thank you all for coming out. I know you have other things to do on a Sunday, but we're going forward. This is not just a feel-good meeting. Uh, Congresswoman, Congresswoman Wilson is, is serious about this. That's right. And we're also talking to some major funders uh, for the Teach the Truth tour so that we can keep doing that, hopefully through the churches. Hopefully through the churches. That's our plan. So thank you, I'll stop. Uh, it's good to be with you today. Thank you so much for coming out. God bless you, man. God bless you. Before we go, before we go, we're going to have prayer. I yes, believe in the power of prayer and I'm not, I'm not crazy. Let me just let me talk about the 20-pound elephant in the room. I'm serving currently on the children's trust as of today. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be serving too much longer, but this what I ain't, I ain't controlled by a position or a title. I know who I am. Come on, somebody. You can't, you can't dangle the little baby in front of me and make me jump. You know, thank God I got older and wiser and stronger and better. Uh, now, the irony of that is I am a gubernatorial appointee on the Children's Trust. Hold on. I've never met. Governor Ron DeSantis, and I don't want to meet him. I'll meet him if you want to talk sense. Right. But I ain't talking to beg and apologize. No, sir. Absolutely not. It's out of your hood. Absolutely not. 
And listen, they can't ride our backs unless it is bent. Dr. King said that. Also, yes, I am a student service support person at a Cold Lake Elementary. I work for the Miami-Dade County Public School System. But I'm also the pastor of Faith Community Baptist Church, and I thank God we have the freedom of speech. And thank God for the pulpit that gives pastors an opportunity to give a prophetic word to our people, something we've done forever. So I want to put the 20 pound, I know it's usually called the 600 pound elephant, but it's not a 600 pound, it's a 20 pound elephant. And you know, if, a, if an elephant is 20 pound, that's a malnutritioned uh, elephant. So it's a 20 pound elephant in the room. And yes, he's trying to do this on the backs of black people so that he can use this as a as a catapult for his presidential bid. And he's trying to show the rest of the world and the rest of the country, rather. Let me show you how I can keep black people in check. Tell Governor DeSantis, the devil is a liar. The devil, you ain't got nobody in check. Now, send this to your, to your people that you're trying to impress. Send this message. And you know what? It's gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Is it gonna get stronger? Yes. Are we going to spread the word? Yes. Are we going to sit back and be quiet? No. Are we going to sit back and play it safe? No. Are we going to speak up for our children? Yes. Are we going to get stronger yes. and stronger? Yes. Will it just be about black people? No. It will be about white people, won't it? Yes. It will be about Jews, won't it? Yes. And let me just say this. I did a little research and a little homework. And I don't want to get, because you have to be careful that you don't personalize stuff. But do you know that Governor DeSantis' great-grandmother came to America as an immigrant from yes. Italy. Yes. And she barely got in the country. They were getting ready to send her back, and now he's gonna be tough on immigration. Yeah. What a hypocrite. My father. What a hypocrite. My father. Manny Diaz, of all people, who is, and we, we ain't begging them because we're going on with our own plan, amen. We gonna do our own thing. Manny Diaz, Jr., who is the Chair of the Commissioner of uh, Education for the State of Florida, is from Cuba. If anybody should know about oppression and, and, and tyranny, it should be someone from Cuba, should it? Right. Yeah. Manny Diaz Jr., you are the biggest hypocrite ever. Yeah. Say hypocrite Diaz. Yeah. Hypocrite Diaz. You a hypocrite, you a hypocrite. Yeah. That's what he is, I mean, listen. You gotta call it like it is. We, we don't play words, I don't listen. I done got too old to you play the words. Right. I got to call it like it is. Call so it let's thank each of every every one of you for coming out, spending time. Was it worth it? Yeah. Was it worth it? Yeah. Amen. Reminiscent of the civil rights movement, we're gonna line across the front and right. It is right over left or left over right. Doctor, wait a minute, Doctor Willis, you on fire? Come on, Doctor. I got to rise. I, I really think it's it's appropriate to ask one or two questions from this audience of Dr. Dunn. And okay. I, I, I have one to start. You, 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 go, you can, you can, please. It's just that. Please, go ahead. That's good, Richard. Yeah. I appreciate y'all's indulgence, yeah, but since you got us out here, yeah, and I, I respect what the Congresswoman has in mind, yeah, but I, I'm gonna ask Dr. Dunn here personally, just speak to us as to what you think we, John Q. Bench Center, can do. Now, I know I'm a retired pastor, but as I said, I'm a member of Cornelia now, so I'm in the pews most of the time. And I'm always wondering, now what can I do to help pastor right. carry this forward? Yeah, yeah. And Pastor Jones has already said it, and I'm doing what I can to help him. We're right. teaching black theology in church, not on a Saturday, on a Tuesday night. On a Tuesday night, we're looking at theology, history, and black biblical major, studies. Major, major, major. Not just black history. No. Because we've been in black churches teaching white theology. And I'm asking you now to speak up to us, and you're the historian. How can we avoid the mistakes of history that have been made so well, and you know so well, today, to stop it from being tomorrow's problem? That's an excellent question. We did it before. Uh, we did it during the Civil War. We fought. We got allies who were white, we joined together, and we, we, we won. We did it during the Civil Rights Movement. It wasn't easy. 
the same allies, Jews, liberal whites, well-meaning Democrats. We must come together this time because it, this is as urgent as any, other, as any other historical moment that we've had. And I just want to say to the pastors, if, you know, as a psychologist, I have to give you this advice. Right. There's such a thing as incidental learning. That is, people learn when they don't really intend to be learning. So think about all those times you have people in your building. When you can put up one old message, one old black history message, this person, that event. The folks just sitting there getting ready for the meeting, but they're learning just sitting there waiting for you all to start the meeting. Let's think of ways that we can have incidental learning of black history in our churches. Okay. Many ways that we, can, that we can do that. Got it. But I think the most important thing, I think the Congresswoman has hit the nail on the head. We gotta bring the churches, academics together to take this message to the community that we keep our history alive. It's gonna be up to us. All right. It's going to be up to us. I'm, right. I'm a willing soul. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good, good, good. Any questions from the audience? We'll take two or three. Anyone? Back, please, please come up, please, and we'll we'll hand the mic. Somebody, we've got another mic. We have I, I have a lot of points. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. So I'm a teacher, and I wanted to hear about the African American history class that's being, you know, I, I think ETS and Calpine. But the comment I want to make is, I looked at the rule. It should be offered in school because the kids get an extra, 100 kids get a half point. A fellow teacher from Central can tell you, and you get a full point. So if you're taking AP, Japanese, German, Dutch, that would be. I believe, Reverend Jones, your son laid all, all the classes that they have. But the point is, it should be there because they get a full point. But it doesn't, you don't have to take the class to take the test. So what you're talking about, the money, we can teach this class on Zoom, and the students can sit for the test because they have to provide for schools where it's not offered, which sounds like all of them, and for homeschool kids. So take what we're doing. And somewhere in there, maybe get an internship or a certain growth. But they don't have to take the class to take the test. They should be able to. And as we all know, kids, if you tell them something's forbidden or it's on the edge, they're all for it. Yeah, I like that. So last year, I heard at a school that was 95% black. Why are you talking about that? Black history was over. Is it that what? Pastor from that particular All right. The same pastor in Charleston, in the South, and we value everybody. We value our history. Thank you for your comment. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's good. Any other questions, John? Yes. Are there any opportunities to volunteer or get involved? Her question. I was going to repeat those questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, um, sorry, I have a little voice. <laughs> um, are there any opportunities to volunteer or get involved, any help that you might need in the organization or okay. things? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we're looking for folks who will help us on these, on these tours. Oh, yeah. We're looking for folks who will help us when we go out into the communities, to the churches, to take the message, to take the materials, uh, to help us make presentations. Uh, we have a website, uh, minus Center for Racial Justice.org, Miami Center for Racial Justice.org. Please go there and you'll find out how you can join in this fight with us to carry this fight forward. So thank you for asking. Just one thing to write, Reverend Brother. They write that to the right. Yes. Up front and then later in the back. Yes, ma'am. Right here. Hello, everybody. My name is Naila Summers Polite. I am the co executive director of an organization called the Dream Defenders. And we got started 11 years ago because of the death of Trayvon Martin, and today he would have been 28 years old. Um, and our founding action, Zimmerman had been arrested for killing him, and so 40 students marched from Daytona, from Bethune's campus, to Sanford, Florida, to demand the arrest of George Zimmerman. And Bethel AME and Sanford welcomed us, and they washed our feet, and they gave us food. So I think, this message of activists and the church coming together again is so important right now. Um, there's never been a stronger time for our movement, for our history, than the joining of people who put their feet on the ground to march, to walk as Jesus did, to stand up for things. And having the church be our home, be the people who let us sleep and, and, and join arms and link hands with us. 
So, you know, it, it's time to take action. It's gonna be time to take action. This man wants to take over the country. And so, there are so many opportunities. There's people across the state that are looking to do things and just, you know, it's time to, to, to band together. Well, yeah, I would say in response to what you just asked and this lady, you know, lady over here, give the movement a moment to jail. We're just starting. This is just coming together the last few weeks. You'll be hearing from us about things you can do to help with our goals. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Dr. Dunn. I'm seeing you again. Um, I'm a Miami-Dade Public County's teacher. I teach history, uh, Miami Palmetto Middle School. And um, what I'm seeing is, first of all, I'm not afraid. I will teach everything as it is. I am not afraid. How do I convince my colleagues not to be afraid? All right. And, and, and the, the problem I'm seeing, the, the fear is what's quashing the teaching of the truth. They cannot be afraid. We cannot be afraid of that bully. So how can I, as a Miami-Dade County Public School teacher, talk to them, convince them, get them on my side, instead of running away, just like I, was, I wanted everyone to wear the t-shirt, teach the truth. Some of them put their heads down and walk away from me. How do we do this? Thank you. There's a list circulating right now. I'm not trying to steal your thunder. Go Mom ahead, Dunn. Go ahead. Mom and Dunn, you're the expert at this. But there's a list circulating. Please put your name and number, contact number or something, or email address, so we can follow up with you. This is not a feel-good session. No. We will, we will take it, and we're going to turn it over. Dr. Marvin Dunn has an organization that's about this, and we want to empower him, coupled with the church, I see an unstoppable moment. My father. And movement. My father. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you, All hearts and okay. all. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Okay, before, amen, before we go very quickly, very quickly, thank you so much. Please, if you can, sign that list or put your name and a number, contact them, email address or something. I'm going to ask all of the ministers to stand around the podium, please. What, is it left or right over left or left over right? Right to left. Ben, no, no. Hand. Which arm? Oh, yes. Dr. Willis? How we do that, Willis? Right over left. Right over left. We're going to sing We Shall Overcome and we'll be led out in prayer by, we're going to ask you to stand uh, by none other than Pastor Moderator Carl Johnson. And those who can't stand, Please stand, and if you are near someone, do the same thing. there's an indication you can do the same thing. If you're not near them, then just fold your hands and connect with the air or the atmosphere. But if you're not intimidated about connecting with someone, please do that, because I see teachers here who came with other colleagues and friends. It just shows the unity please take the picture of, of our endeavor to get the job done. A rainbow coalition. I want to thank Reverend Dunn, as he did earlier, to thank all of you for coming out to this significant gathering. Why? Because the Lord showed up. Whenever the Lord is in a gathering, it's never insignificant. We've heard the problems. We got one. But we also heard the plan. We got one. But now we need to hear the prayer to put this plan in place that we give God to honor what someone is trying to dishonor when it comes to our history. God knows it is troubling that we have to deal with such a thing like this in the time we live in. Great is he that is within us than he that is in the world. Yes. The prophet Dunn has spoken and the church ought to say amen. amen. The professor Dunn has spoken amen. and the church has said amen. amen. The preachers have spoken. Amen. The people have spoken. Yes. Now we need to hear God speak. Yeah, and God only speaks when his people will call by his name. Yes. Shall humble themselves and pray and seek his face yeah. and turn from the wicked ways. Yes. Then, and only then, we will hear from heaven. Yes, sir. He'll heal our land yes, and forgive our sins. Dunn said that's a sin in the land. Yes, sir. The sin of racism. Yes, sir. The sin of disregard for people. Yes, sir. It's not of God. 
Yes, and so we need God yeah. to help us fight this battle at all our steps. So God, our Father in heaven, yeah. your name is above every name. As a matter of fact, your name is an excellent name. And according to your word, you say you pull down one and you bring up another one. So Lord, we need you to move your hand in the midst of Florida. There seem to be frustration. There seem to be fear that's taken over our Florida state. And we need you to intervene, Lord, and begin to pull down and then put up. You know what we need? So we simply call you by faith at this faith temple Baptist church where Pastor Dunn is the pastor. Thank you, Lord, for what he said. That in the pulpit, we are not muscled with our mouth. We can speak against that which is not of you. And Lord, you heard the prophet speak. You heard the professor speak. You heard the preacher speak. You heard the people speak. So Lord, we're calling you by faith today to show your glory, to show that you are love man. And man is in your hand, not you and man's hand. So in the name of the Lord and the Lord every day, the name we call Jesus, will you go before us and will you fight with us? And will you give us the victory? Because he who had begun the good work will perform. So we thank you, Lord, for the prayer and the praise and the push. But most of all, for the victory. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. We are not afraid. Say amen. Come on, say amen.